CTL is pulling at 5 volt. Yeah. It can't. Uh, and it can't. It doesn't have a transistor to do it. Doesn't have a transistor. As soon as you've done that, I'll I'll show you a little example. All right, go, go. Normally, in a TTL output, there's this going on. There's two transistors. Yep. One provides logic low, that one, mm -hmm. and one provides logic high. And either that one is on or that one is on. You can't have both. So, uh, like we say, it's um, totem pole output. One of you know totem. Totem, yeah, your big pole with heads on the on the pole. So here's the totem. There's one head. There's the other head. So it's either or. Either or. Are you, that, this one provides a zero. This one provides a one. There's extra logic in behind that other transistors. Yeah? Yep. The the going joke is, if you find one of these where that one's a dud transistor. You just laser off there and then sell it as an open collector package and charge more for it. Okay. <laughs> so you can charge more for your failures off your production line. So it can only pull to zero, it can't pull to one anymore because this this transistor here is missing and that diode is missing in open collector output gates. So it can be any of your normal gates, AND gates, OR gates, inverters. Yep. doesn't matter if they've got an open collector output they often mark it with this little star yep. on the output or they put a little o dot c dot there to mean open collector no on the collector of this transistor there's nothing there connected to drive okay. and so now what provides logic one the only thing there that's capable of doing it is this pull-up resistor So normally, if you want to deliver logic zero, current is pulled through that resistor yep. and perhaps a little bit of current out of the next gate, not much, down to ground. But when you stop providing logic zero, instead this pull-up resistor provides the, the active high. So for the CMOS only, yeah? Mm. Now they're inside, it could be CMOS, it could be TTL in some cases. Inside, there's some effective capacitance to ground, and it will indeed, due to the time for that resistor to charge that capacitance, that'll introduce a delay. Uh -huh. Yeah, as it charges up. Yeah. But the capacitance is very small, typically 5 picofarad. And but it does mean that you've got to have a reasonable resistance here that can charge that up reasonably quickly. It can't be mega and giga ohms of, of resistance to give fast response. Yeah. In slow circuits you might consider it. There's also a little bit of leakage across the pack, you know, across this, the printed circuit this board. This is connected to earth, yeah? So whatever leakage it is, yeah. would it go to It'll earth? be internal, yeah, inside yeah, the gate. Inside the Tiny board. bit, not much. But that, see that plate there? Yeah. That provides, and that's there grounded. So that provides effective capacitance. So there's no capacitor it? then? There isn't a capacitor there, but it functions as if there is a capacitor. Oh. Because two metals exposed to one another always have a limited amount of capacitance with respect to each other. Yeah, yeah. And that's all that's going on here. So um, good values for this resistor here, typically 10K, 1K maybe. 100k, something in that region. Now you're saying 10k because we assuming that it's the CMOS is charge the capacitance up quickly, 12, overcome any leakage currents. 12 volt, you say? Sorry? 12 volt, you say? If, but, well, if the it could CMOS. Be. Example 12 volt. Yeah. Okay. Typically, 12 so volts what, what on a 12 volt battery. What would be the Oh, you said 5 volt for the TTL, yeah? TTL's got to be on plus 5. Yeah. Plus 5. So plus 5, 12 volts, so we we'll put a resistor there to pull up. To 12. To 12. Remembering that logic 1 for a 12 volt power supply is, is about 8 volts. 
and there's no way that TTL, TTL could provide 8 volts on a 5 volt. If In TTL land, logic high is 2 volts. Yep. In CMOS land, it can be as high as 3.5 yep. on the same 5 volt rail. Mm -hmm. To overcome that, this will, if it was going from low to high, it would stop at 2 volts. Yep. That would be high for the TTL. It would, but then the resistor would continue to pull it up to plus 5. Okay. So it would come across at plus five and then come down later on. Mm -hmm. Sort of get it? Yeah. So uh, this one only works in a very special case of when they're both running off the same five volt rail. It's not a general interface method, but it is one that's used. You can use the open collector system, yep. provided the open collector can withstand that voltage. Some can, some can't. So we have to find, make sure it's rated at yes. whatever voltage we're using there. Yeah. So if, it, if it, we want 12 volt, what, you want to rate it at higher than 12 volt or under 12 volt? Some are rated at 15 and 12. Oh, so I'll put a 15 some, in there just to make not. sure. Some are not. Some are not. Some are only rated at 7 volt in open collector. Mm -hmm. Now I, I know the part numbers for that, but the, the point that you need to know is it's, you can't just put any open collector in there, you've got to be careful. careful yep. The guaranteed method is to go down the street and buy an IC that was made for that job. You mean a TTL and CMOS? It's a CMOS or? IC, it's a CMOS part, and it's designed to interface between the two different rails. It has a 5 volt pin for the TTL supply, mm -hmm. and it has another plus pin for our supply, for the CMOS supply, oh, so and it has level translating so circuits double, double inbuilt. Pin. It's in yeah, two power supply rails. Yeah. Two power supply. Yeah. yeah, and it has inbuilt logic that, that does the, the level translation. But that's so a special part, and it's more expensive to buy. Oh, you, you won't tell me that part number, do you? Yeah, that, the 4049 is the inverting part, and the 4050 is from memory is the non-inverting part. Non-inverting part. Yeah, yeah, it's either inverter gate or a non-inverter gate. Um, he'll probably describe them in your lesson. I think he's already... Uh, what is that again? CMOS. Complementary MOS. Complementary MOS. Transistor. What did you say with the O? Oxide... Complementary MOS. Yep. It's called complementary because there's one of the P-types and one of the N-type. Your trained eyes can now notice it's a totem pole output just the same. Yep. One to deliver positive out and the other one to deliver negative out. Usually never the two shall be on. Uh, if that's plus VE, it'll get up to very nearly plus VE and zero volts out. Very nearly, very nearly. Limited only by the, the serial resistance inside these two here, the on resistance, and that's not much in common MOSFETs. No, so the, 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 the one that have a little bit of a capacitive action going on to? You can see the two plates of the capacitor there. Yep. So, yes. So, in theory, because they're both insulated by the oxide layer mm -hmm. there can be no current now the oxide is there just to prevent DC long term the average is zero but instantaneous there is a surge of current that goes in mm -hmm. to drive that capacitance and if you try to drive it to zero there'll be a surge of current back out but it's only maybe five bar. Uh, 
very little capacitance in there. Um, but there is some. It's a measurable amount. It causes a delay in some circuits. If Usually you're driving it directly from the output of a previous gate and it charges and discharges that capacitance instantly. instantly. But in some circuits where you've got pull-up <coughs> resistors and pull-down resistors, you can actually see the delay. It's, it's measurable. And that causes you crowbarring problems oh. if, if you delay the transition from one le logic level to the other. I was thinking we're trying to avoid that crowbarring, yeah? Yeah, at the slew point. So it's slewing. In between? Slewing means yeah, transferring between one voltage and the next. And this is the crowbar area in the middle where things could turn ugly for the power supply rail. Now one thing you didn't tell me is to me the two volt was with the TTL. So what's the volt for the CMOS? For, uh, for logic high? It's a problem, isn't it? They're not so clear. But that's the 50% point. That might be 30. 70. We know that's definitely up there, logic one. We know that's logic zero. Yep. We're not certain here, and we're not certain here. It could be down to 50% is the turnover point of rail. Okay. Or it could be, th it's guaranteed at 3070, or, th or 3367. So you're saying zero, zero to 30%, that's a logic low? It, it's very clearly logic zero. 70 to 100 is very clearly logic one. Mm -hmm. It could be that halfway is the turnover point, mm -hmm. but we're not sure. Not sure. So the good thing to do is to ensure you're in those clear regions. So it's not an exact science there. No, it's not. So I'll show you two here. If for a common 5 volt rail, for TTL, Tittle. That CMOS is 3.7, uh, sorry, 1.7, 3.4. Both, yeah? Sorry? Bolt? Yeah, it's a, or 3.3. Or um, yeah, so just comparing them when they're on the same power supply rail, you can see that, that that's a logic low for him, but it's not a logic low for CMOS. For, for Tittle. Tittle is one there, but CMOS is one up there. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> so that's, that's a real problem if you want these two. Uh, families to interact. line up but unlike TTL CMOS can take rails that are much higher yeah. and much lower so you can have a CMOS part here operating at plus 3 volt trying to drive another one here which is operating at plus 15 volt Oh. And logic levels for this would be 1 and 2 volt. Mm -hmm. Logic levels for that would be 6 and 11 volts, or 6 and 9 volts. Got problems. They don't agree with, with voltage levels if they've got different power supply rails. So it's a problem for CMOS anyway because, because of that, that ability to have different levels and different points in the circuit. It drives the people who make the motherboards mad because they, they might have your CPU running on a 1.5 volt rail in the middle of the motherboard, but some of the logic towards the outer edges might be running on 5 volt. Yep. Now they've got to convert. They've got to have level shifters somewhere in the, in the No, system. but you say we can get a double pin... Converter of some kind, like um, these ones? Yeah. Double pin, yeah? The one over there. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what the CMOS supply is. It could be the same, plus five, or it could be 
plus 12. He mentioned some of the